Okay, this is um, the second episode of the pony tutorial series, and in the first one we made our armature, so we're going to move move on from there. Everything that I'm using is out of the pony supply pack, which you can find at SerafinaFiberArt.com under is it needle felting supplies? Uh, yes, I believe so. You've been on the website lately? Well, I like to check it out. All right. Okay, I think it's under needle felting supplies, and that will take you um, to the Etsy shop. So, and also on SarafinaFiberArt.com is a video page that has all of our videos um, in a list, in organized, with links to the videos. It's just easier to find the video that you're looking for there than um, searching for it on YouTube it can be kind of a spider's web. So, we're going to zoom in and get started. Do you have any no, questions I'm, at this point? No, I'm excited. Okay, good. Let's let's do this. Let's go. Okay, we're going to get started with this off-white um, coral wool, which I really like because it just felt really, really well. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is wrap the legs. So this wool is really thick. Um, so I'm going to pull about a four-inch piece. There was some difficulty I think in the last videos with the amount because it's a little tricky to see online so we have these little marks on our stab it wabbit now and so when I say four inches that's four inches I'm not counting like the fluff on the ends just just the full part of the wool and then since it's so thick I'm actually gonna break it down long ways four times. So I, now I have four pieces, which is nice because there's four legs on a pony. Isn't that convenient? Um, so smart. I know. I start at the top and work towards the bottom. You don't have to do it that way. That's just the way I do it. And But when you get towards the bottom, I really want you to taper out and not do the whole um, hoof and everything because it's going to get other colors there and we don't want the bottom of his leg to get all fat and you know look like he needs to go to the vet so I'm actually just letting letting it end even before um, before where his hoof is so if you have some practice at this and you know you can get it tightly and smoothly you don't even have to needle felt it but if you have a loose spot, just set it down and, and stab it in. And I'm going to do, show you again, I just keep it tight and smooth. Remember to go the di same direction that you wrap the pipe cleaner. That will keep it um, from having sort of unsightly bumps. Nobody wants unsightly bumps. Okay, and I will do the back legs. Okay, so I have all four legs wrapped. And now we want to get some wool onto the hooves before we go any further. And for that, I need, where did I put this? Aha, the bag of detail colors. I'm gonna use the darkest gray that's in here for the hoof. There's also a black, um, which you could use, but I like the not quite black, it's almost black. Um, so you need actually very, very little. So again, the easiest way to do this is to pull about a two inch piece and s split it into halves or quarters. It's really not much that you need for each hoof. And I have actually heating over here my black beeswax, which I'll show you because it is very difficult to get the wool to stay right on the tip of the hoof. So I'm gonna wrap it around and then I've melted my, my beeswax and this is a little deep so you guys can't see. I'm actually gonna dip my finger in it and then I'm just gonna put that on there. It's hot, trust me. Be, don't, be careful. Yeah, don't dip your finger in there if you're not used to it. <laughs> And then, I've got, whoops, I just, threw, I just threw my wool in there. I just made a mess, Milo. Well, 
It happens to the best of yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then you can continue to wrap that um, wool into the wax, and it will be nice and tight. And the black beeswax has a lot of dye in it, so it doesn't dry quite as, um, it's not dye, it's, it's a pigment. Um, it doesn't dry quite as opaque or white as the plain white beeswax. Let me do one more for you to see, and then I'll finish the other two off camera while you guys do the same. I'm gonna try not sticking my finger in it this time. But if you if you stick it right in a full thing of wax, you run the risk of just getting like way too much. Careful. That's good. And I just have a little too much wool. I like to keep their feet skinny. I don't really do a full shaped hoof on these little ponies, like I did on the. Oh, you guys can't see it right now, but on the the draft horse behind me, on the shelf. Um, like I actually sculpted, you know, a detailed horse hoof. On the ponies, I just do the, the wrapping technique. Okay, I'm gonna do that on the other two. Okay, so we got all four little hooves done there. Um, next, I just wanna, I like to build things as evenly as possible, not let one part get too finished um, ahead of another. So I want to start wrapping the body and head and neck. So we're going to take a nice long piece, like the length of your work of your felting surface, a good nine or 12 inches or so. And this time just split it in half. You don't have to split it into quarters. And I like to start at the back butt area and Wrap forward. That pony is way too skinny. He needs a few good dinners. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna build him up. We're gonna get him nice and fat. I like nice fat ponies. And then we're gonna do our our um, crisscross over this chest area. So over the shoulder and under the opposite armpit. And you have to go over the back. And now I'm under this armpit. Oops, my, my wool broke. And I go up over the shoulder. And then whatever you have left, you can just finish out around the body. I just kind of made a mess of that. Okay, and then just stab it. You don't have to stab too much this first layer, just to keep the end on. And we're going to do it again. And this piece, well, I might do the same thing actually the exact same thing because it needs that it needs that chest area wrapped twice hopefully I made this long enough over the shoulder under the armpit over the back not quite under the armpit and over the shoulder My sister made me this for Christmas. Isn't that cute? She's so sweet. I, I did not realize that what it was. I, I almost peed on it the other day. <laughs> Milo, oh, you would have been in trouble if you peed on that. Good thing I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of looks like a flower. True. It does look a lot like a flower. I get it. In a way, I guess it would be a compliment, right? Uh, yes. Exactly. <laughs> so now I've pulled about a, a six to eight inch piece and I'm going to split it in half. And I want to start at the base of the neck and get it good and, and anchored around the base of the neck here before you move forward. So several wraps there. And now I'm moving up the neck. And on the head, um, right now, just a simple wrap down, but let it taper. Don't do, don't linger on this nose. Don't build up wool at the tip of this nose because we're actually going to put a different color there. I mean, it's okay if you just get it 
you know, thinly covered. Um, but definitely don't get a big, like, Q-tip on the end of there. And even with your fingers, you can just smooth the wool around so you don't even have to needle felt it. And we'll do that again as well with the second, with the second half. And this time, what? I was just going to say, you are very good at this. Oh, thanks. Sure. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's why I'm trying to, trying to show other people how to do it. Very nice of you. Yeah. <laughs> well, it helps my business. It's oh. not completely selfless. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> um, and this time, if you have any amount, just stick to the top half of the head. Don't, don't go down to the nose. You can just let it go, um, you know, at the top half, because we want that to be fatter in the end anyway. Okay, so since I don't like anything to be left unfinished, let's get out some locks and put it in the, um, the end of our tail. And so you'll have plenty of locks. Uh, this is just a good opportunity to talk about locks also, whether it's for the pony or whatever you're doing. Um, not all of the locks are going to be, you know, perfect and beautiful and usable. So you have enough to pick through and find, you know, a good piece or color that you like. Um, gosh, like this just happens to be a really gorgeous, gorgeous piece. So I'm going to use that, well, maybe I'll save that for the mane because that's so, so pretty. Let me see if I can find another good piece. Um, and you can keep in your supplies. It's handy to have either a little brush or comb um, to just comb out the ends. Or if you comb it, sometimes if there is some vegetable matter in there, you can sort of shake it out after you comb it. And sometimes the locks are a little bit felted on the sheep end of the, of the fiber. Um, and you could take some, some scissors and cut that off if you want to make sure that you have nice, loose, um, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? loose, not felted, <laughs> um, free flowing fibers. Okay. The other thing that I wanted to point out that I've been doing, um, I actually, Milo, we use this technique on you is, um, is you can use your straightening iron if you don't want that real curly look, which really isn't, there aren't very many ponies that have curly hair. Um, you could use a straightening iron and and just, you know, heat it up and just go down the locks and it'll just smooth it out. Um, so that's just another little trick. I'm not going to do that today. I kind of like the crazy look of all the curls. So I'm going to take this, this nice piece that I got and tuck half of it through the loop that we left in the tail and kind of leave the prettier end the uncut end slightly longer so that it shows more. Whoops, what happened here? There we go. And then give that loop a good t twist until it's tight so that it holds the locks in there. Like that. So you're, you're twisting the pipe cleaner? I'm twisting, yes, exactly. Twisting the pipe cleaner so that it clamps down on the locks. And then we can set these other locks aside. We're going to take a small piece of core wool, just a little, you know, quarter inch by two inch length, and just go down the tail bone with some wool one time. And that is going to give us um, a little bit of wool to felt into when we finish the tail later on. And you can let it overlap that kind of chunk where the locks are knotted in there. You can go ahead and wrap over that and then felt 
a metal. I'm going to use my coarser needle, single needle, just because I'm so close to all that pipe cleaner wire. And the coarse needle just really makes sure it's like locked in there. All right, Milo, we should check the time. See where we are. We got a good good start. Maybe we have time for a little bit more. Okay, so that's a pretty good pretty good start. Um, we're gonna maybe do slightly longer videos, more like 15, 15, 20 minutes maybe, so we can so we can move along and. Um, yeah, we're in good shape. Next time we'll we'll continue wrapping. We probably have another another video of building the legs and the belly, and and we have some um, skewer technique on the neck. Um, so a lot more wrapping, and then um, and then we get into the pelt and the face and finishing legs and things like that. So we will see you next time. Thanks, Milo. Thanks. That was fun. Good. You learning something? Sure. Good. <laughs> Bye. Bye.